You're listening to ESPN Alamogordo 103.7. Welcome back. And uh, for our weekly interview, Coach A.J. Sisko of the Alamogordo Tiger football team with us. Coach, how are you? I'm good, brother. Uh, our, our lightning list is to four, right? Yeah, it's four. We're going to count that one on Friday. <laughs> Even though it was at about 5 o'clock, we're still counting. We had to clear the field of everybody. Yeah. It was, uh, it, you know, so that's four of six games. And yeah. two two have no, been. No, four or five games. Yeah. Wait, we're, I don't. Yeah, even four know. of six. Because we, yeah. I was counting the Valencia game. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the only games we haven't had lighting days are, are the Santa Teresa game and Rodoso. Rodoso, yeah, yeah. We got the big storm for the Santa T game though. That came through at about three thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It was before the game. That's right. I remember now. Yeah. Well, um, I you know I, I anticipate that's exactly what you guys wanted out of the Chaparral game. You know, everybody played solidly. I mean, I'm sure not giving up that first touchdown was not in the plan, but. Overall, everything went pretty smoothly for you. Yeah, that's exactly uh, kind of how we went. And I told our kids how proud of them I was of how they handled that. And um, we kind of knew going in, we didn't show our kids any film on it, uh, on them, and, and just kind of had our mindset that we're going to go about our business the right way. So when we were talking to our kids, I was telling them how proud of them that we didn't have any big screw ups. Uh, I mean, we didn't punt once, we took control of the ball, no turnovers. Um, and played well, and, and just that's exactly what we wanted to do that game. Um, and the best part was getting a bunch of young kids in in the second half and, and letting them get a bunch of reps, um, which they which they so neatly deserve. And I, you know, I also want to give you kudos because I mean, I, you could have obviously left your starters in there. You know the situation. I mean, you of anybody know the situation yeah. what Chaparral is going through, and you know, stuck out guys out there that probably play a little more JV than they do uh, at the varsity level, and and um, it helped you guys out one, but also. You know, maybe get, made the competition a little bit fairer there in the second half. It is, so. and that's and that was our goal. We told our kids at, at halftime and um, that we're going to get one more possession in and get the running clock going, and then it was strictly JVs after that. And, and we we wanted to get them a bunch of reps in that situation. And, and it's it's one of those situations, and I've been on the other end of it, and I've been um, on the end of it, uh, dishing it out a couple of times. Your kids deserve to play, and so we want to do whatever we can to kind of draw it out as long as possible and give our kids a chance to play and and when it got down to the end it was just a time to kick the field goal and I mean that's what our kids deserve they deserve to score touchdowns and do those things and um, we just happened to do it and we drew it out as long as we possibly could but it was and it's good for that that program over there their coach is trying to do the right thing you watch them in pregame they're structured they're organized they're very young and, and it, there's no disservice to those guys not to be able to play four quarters yeah and I, like I said I think in the 2017 year we saw a couple teams that I feel like did it the right way Valley was a perfect example you know yeah. Chavez played you guys well, you know mm-hmm. got to a certain point and then brought in his J. yeah kids, and then so. that's and there's a lot of and there's there's a bunch of good coaches in the state that are class acts and we talked to our kids about it about everything we do is with class we're going to win with class we're going to lose with class we're going to play this game with class um, and do it the right way and our kids handled themselves very well on Friday night uh, you know, from a standpoint of what we saw in the game, uh, you know, Sean obviously had another big night. The offensive line played really well, did the things you wanted to. I mean, when you got sat down and watched the tape and technique-wise, did you see the things that you wanted to see? Yeah, we were we were pretty solid all the way across the board. Um, we had that one the one big blow up in the in the secondary where we gave a touchdown, and, and the kids right there made a play, and um, he thought it. He ended up knocking it down and going incomplete. Ah, okay. He thought it, he thought it was incomplete, and so that's why he kind of shut it down. But um, he came off immediately and he owned it. He says, that's on me. I, I thought it was incomplete. And that's the kind of character trying to build on our kids, um, own mistakes, be accountable. Uh, but technique-wise, fundamental-wise, so much improvement from where we were at um, the week before against Deming, which is what we harped on all week about going back to the basics. And we did a great job of it. Uh, very physical up front. Um, control line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, ran the football just like when we threw the football a little bit better than what we normally have. And, and some of the things that we told our kids from day one, we want to make sure we feel better getting on the bus going into these next four weeks after Friday night. And we feel like that. And it also seemed like you gave guys a couple of rests. We didn't see Julio. We didn't see Shane very much. On, yeah, Shane, on Shane, Shane just played offense for us. Uh, yeah. Couch only played a couple of series on offense. Um, Julio didn't play. Um, we, we're trying to get some guys healthy and get ready for this next four weeks. Yeah, because obviously you know what's coming up. And uh, we knew this at the beginning of the season. When we were sitting here talking about it, you knew this Los Salonis got it right. Oswell Artesia run was going to be the toughest of the year, but you know I think from what we've seen, maybe not so much out of the Chaparral game, but but when I you know you look at the Lovington game and a couple others, you know these guys should have confidence that they can go out there and, and compete with these guys. Yeah, and that's our mindset. Is we talk we talked to our kids on Monday about it because everybody tells me, oh my gosh, you got to end the last your season in the year back into your season with these four teams, and don't you wish you had them up at the front? I'm like, no, man. If we're playing these guys. This will make us play better going in the playoffs, and that's how we want it. Um, we'll get more out of playing these four teams than we would out of playing um, somebody else earlier in the season that we've already played. So we're excited for the challenge, and we got some confidence going. Um, we know it's not going to be a, a tail kick, and we can go and kind of hold our own and and make plays, and we got a chance to win the game on Friday. And it's it's going to be a dogfight, and it's going to be tough, but we got a chance. 
Uh, biggest thing for you in terms of you know slowing down what they do offensively, I'm sure Cade Benavides is probably at the top of the list. Um, you know, they seem to do both running and passing the ball pretty well. Yeah, Coach Moppin's an Artesia boy, um, and, he, and he brought that system to Los Angeles, but he kind of ventured off from the Artesia thing and doing some things, and, and they want to be very physical up front and run the football. And they got two backs that can absolutely fly. Um, they take foot-to-foot splits, and they're massive up front. they got two tackles that are about 6'4", 300-something pounds. Um, center and guard or center and two guards are extremely physical and get after you. So um, Benavides, everybody knows he can sling it. Um, he, he's not elusive like the Garland kid last year that can run all over the place. Um, and they got good skill kids across the board. They're well coached. Uh, they'll try to tempo us and go fast at times. So we've had to inc- implement that into practice and, and throw some tempo situations at our kids. Um, but they're just well coached offensively and can hurt you both ways. And we got to be very sound and we got to tackle. I mean, we got to tackle in space. And that's something we didn't do against Deming. Um, but we've done a pretty good job throughout the year being able to tackle, tackle in space, and make plays. And their defense, probably, would you say it's the strongest part of their team? Or do you think their offense? I mean, because they've played very well defensively all season. Yeah, I'd still say their offense. Yeah. But that's not, not a knock on their defense because yeah, yeah. they are <laughs> extremely talented on defense. This will be the best defense we've played all year. Um, they've got four defensive linemen that are absolutely massive up front um, that run across 6'2", 260, 6'3", 270. Um, we can run very physical. Two linebackers um, are pretty dang good. Um, you go back to they've always had linebackers. You go back the last two years, they've had that Sanchez kid um, that was uh, a stud. And but we can kind of dictate some formation wise of what we can put them in secondary wise and coverage wise and how many we can put in the box. So uh, very physical. We're gonna have to take care of the football. We're gonna have to run the football, and that's the number one thing. We got to be able to run the football, control the clock, slow it down, um, and, and go at our pace to have success. Do you, I mean, do you feel like you're going to need to be a little more balanced? A little, you know, cause, I mean, obviously, when you have your best games, you guys are running the football more than anything else. Yeah, we're you need a little bit more out of the pass. We're going to have to throw the ball a little bit, and, and they give us some things um, that we're going to try to take advantage of in the secondary. Uh, we went back and watched last year's film this morning with our kids, and, and we had some success throwing the football against them. And they and they haven't changed a whole lot defensively, maybe just some personnel. So um, we're definitely going to have to stress them in the secondary wise and force them to be uncomfortable and do some things they don't normally have to do. Yeah. And I would say more than anything, I and mean, this is the opportunity for this senior class over these last four weeks. I mean, they, they, they've had to go through uh, a tough last couple of years. This is the year that we've obviously seen the improvement. Um, I mean, has that been a, a talk to the guys and say, hey, this is your opportunity to make your mark here at the end of the year? Yeah, we told our kids from day one, I said, you want to guarantee yourselves in the playoffs, all you got to do is beat one of these four teams and you're guaranteed in because nobody else in the state's going to beat them. Um, we tell our kids there's five teams in the state. There's the f- top four teams, and there's only one other team that can play with these guys, and that's us. And, and we truly believe that, um, that we're the only team that can knock one of these guys off. And, and that's our mindset going in, that it's it's them four and us, and we're going to see how it ends up these last four weeks. All right, we'll look forward to it. Friday night at Los Lunas, and uh, the first little fall feel of a uh, football game, I'm sure it'll be nice to not <laughs> know that there's probably not going to be any thunderstorms. There's a zero chance of lightning and thunderstorms, <laughs> yeah. but it's going to be about 40 degrees, so I'll have some gloves on and some jackets. Um, but it, it's going to feel like football, and it's going to be a good environment up there. Uh, Los Angeles School District does a great job putting on stuff, and it's it's going to be a fun night in, in Los Angeles and a fun night to watch Tiger football. All right, Coach, appreciate the time as always. Appreciate it, Charles. All right.